Hey everyone, I'm Emily May, the producer of My Big Fat Blonde Musical, and thank you for joining for our Facebook and YouTube Live tonight. I am here with Lisa K. Wyatt, our director. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. So it's, it's, it's fun to be here in broadcast world. <laughs> I guess we're, I know you're uh, yeah. getting, we're going to have a little chat tonight. Yeah. I'm on the interwebs on a series of tubes. I see you have your kitty friend next to you as well. Oh uh, yes. 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 This is Junga. He is my um, office supervisor. Yes. Very, very strict, very strict supervisor, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important to have supervision. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, we we both have bonded over our cats, and uh, yes, <laughs> uh, I have very uh, strict cat uh, bosses as well. <laughs> well, you know, all hail the furry overlords. <laughs> um, so, oh my God, I miss I miss you, by the way, and I miss you too. We've been chatting a lot, but this is the first time we kind of get to talk about the show and answer questions and. True. You know, uh, it's, it's uh, been a while. We premiered in March, so it's exciting mm -hmm. that um, we are officially Emmy eligible in the short form comedy and drama and variety series category. So oh, kudos, really? kudos to you and the whole team. Super exciting. Uh, if Thanks. anyone has not watched the series, which you should, <laughs> uh, we're on YouTube. So go follow my Big Fat Bomb musical. We're on, obviously we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube if you have not already and watch all of the episodes and the music videos. If you haven't, you can binge watch them in an hour and a half. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so... I wanted to get started and talk about you. I want everyone to get to know you as the director of my Big Fat Blonde musical. You've been in the industry for a really long time. You've done some incredible work. And so I want everyone, just tell everyone uh, about you. Um, so I've been a, a working character actress for well over a couple decades. Um, I've was recurring on The Office. I mean, the thing that most often gets me recognized is playing Lynn, Kevin's sweet girlfriend mm -hmm. on The Office, which was lovely to actually play someone who got like the pretty hair and the pretty makeup and had feelings that someone cared about um, because many of my characters in the past, um, I played a lot of thugs. I mean, for a law-abiding board game playing witness, the glory. Yes, um, that is glorious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for... I mean, so like me to wind up playing a lot of thugs and murderers. It's it's interesting. It could be just like the years of repressed rage because we don't express things. Um, I got a huge break when I worked with Richard Kelly on um, a USC grad project, and then he wound up calling me up saying, "Hey, um, Drew Barrymore is going to be funding and producing Donnie Darko." come in an audition, which then led me to meet the casting director of that, Joseph Middleton, who was an amazing human being, um, who brought me in on other movies. And then Rich wrote roles for me in Southland Tales and in the box. So um, that one um, super cool student film then led to four different films for me. That's an incredible yeah. story. That's so incredible that you, that, that one moment kind of define the next four or five projects for you? Um, it really did help um, quite a bit. And part of what I think people forget about one of the reasons to work with um, young filmmakers is it's not just for the real, it's like you're getting to know the next cadre of people who run this town. Um, and you're getting them in, you know, you're meeting them in the, at the ground floor so that you're someone that they already trust, you're part of their group. Um, and I, I can't see enough. I, I can't see enough good things about Rich Kelly. Um, he was wonderful to like watch and observe how he dealt with everyone on set, and stayed so remarkably calm. Um, something that I always try to bring myself to to a set. I try to bring serenity as a director as much as I can, because um, there's enough 
there's enough going on with the bells and the whistles and the whatnot and the whole, oh, we don't have permits. Ha <laughs> ha, please don't stop us. Oh, look, look, there's there's a bunch of policemen at the Dunkin' Donuts and we're right across filming. But yeah, there's, a, there's enough chaos on set that mm -hmm. having a director that has a steady hand, a compassionate hand that can guide the actors is very important. And I have to say, you were a, an incredible director, incredible on set. You were always so kind and warm to everyone, even during stressful or difficult moments to film. You were always willing to step in, willing to say, okay, we can solve this issue. And so I have to commend you for that because sometimes you might get a director that couldn't handle that and you handled it with grace and professionalism. Um, and so speaking of, of directing and kind of, mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of actors move into directing, right? They, mm -hmm. they take on those types of projects. And so what was your decision and what was kind of your decision-making in, in taking on My Big Fat Bomb Musical? So, well, in, you know, in taking it on, I had, you know, I've been an acting coach for ages and I, what drew me to my big fat blonde was Teresa and Becca. Um, I had directed Becca in a play called Cake at Theater Unleashed. And she just came in and was such a breath of fresh air with such overwhelming energy. Um, and, you know, it occurred to me, it's like, okay, so she's auditioning for the romantic lead. But who says a college valedictorian has to be TV tiny? No one. So there's no reason in the world why a woman of size couldn't play that role and she killed it. Um, and then actually on that, that same fall, while I was directing Cake, the opportunity to go ahead and direct a short film um, came up for um, the holiday hostess for just like a 48 hour film festival. And I was thinking, I was like, all right, so I need to go, I need to study lenses. And my husband is just like, honey, you already know more than most people have been on sets. You've been on more sets than most people. 100%. Just jump in and do it. Um, so I thank my lovely husband for that push to just go ahead and direct my first on-screen thing, um, short film. And, and then when I saw Teresa and Becca's show down at Hollywood Fringe, I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. So when... The project came up. Um, I just I let Teresa know that if you need a director for this, keep me in mind. Um, it's just a matter of like keeping in touch. And because I loved it, it was you know truly a labor of love on this because there was a lot of work. There was yeah, there was a lot of work to direct the entire series. It's like oh right, we pretty much directed a a film in the course of yeah. a fall within some bits and bobs to, to pick up over the next six months. Um, but yeah. yeah, it was definitely a process. Um, well, I'm so happy that you stayed in touch with Teresa and Becca and that mm -hmm. uh, you signed on because it was an incredible process. And now we're Emmy eligible, which like I yes. never thought that um, that would be a possibility, but we all like envision and we all visualize. And that was, a thing that I think Teresa and Becca and we all talked about in our initial conversations, like how far mm -hmm. can we get this and how many positive uh, like um, messages we can put out there and make sure that this message gets out there. So we're excited. Mm -hmm. um, but let's get, get back to your comment about the process of making this mm -hmm. show and this series. Oh. My chair is sinking. Oh, on no. One second. <laughs> one second. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Live hosting, it happens. All right, there we go. That's better. There you are. You're good. I was like, I know. like suddenly, like, I'm sudden, so much headroom. Yeah. I don't think I had that much headroom, and then voila. Oh, those little <laughs> desk chairs are tough. Uh, <laughs> um, so we had to go through this crazy casting process, right? It was very intense. We had thousands of submissions, actors from all over the place. We not only had to get actors that could sing, but that could play these really dynamic characters that could bring these characters to life on screen, that could dance or at least move to a little bit of choreography. So mm -hmm. what was, what was uh, did it feel daunting to you at first when we, when we put the casting notice up and we had to dive into it? 
Well, it's like when I noticed, like, because I think it was like over 1,200 that yeah. there were, you know, some roles that had like 600 mm -hmm. submissions for that one role. Um, and it was, I mean, I've always had the utmost respect for casting directors and this just bumped that up because I don't know how they do it. And I know that we were very conscious in the way that we approached casting that I wanted to make sure that if someone didn't have a bunch of theater credits or they didn't have that background, that recognizing that it's a privilege to be able to work for free, um, that that is not something that everyone is able to do. And I wanted to keep this as open and as diverse as possible. Um, so we really, really took the time to look at every resume that came in. We watched every reel that came in. We did. Um, <laughs> we did, and we had, um, I think we closed three coffee shops one of the nights when we were we were trying to pick one of the roles. And I think so, or was, Panera Bread or something. I think Panera Bread was one of our staples. <laughs> yeah, Panera Bread was definitely was definitely a staple. But I think we we had a we had a night where we started at Priscilla's and then they closed, and then we were trying to go to a Starbucks and then they closed and we wound up at Bob's Big Boy. Um, it was a it was yes. a Toluca Lake evening, um, <laughs> yes. but just going through all of our choices. Um, and then it just, you know, it's that heartbreak of wow. so many wonderful people came in to audition and feeling like I wish I, I, you know, there's people that I totally wish that I could have cast everyone um, who walked know. in the door. I remember looking at um, every, I remember we looked at every video because we had to do like a second call just to narrow it down of like, mm -hmm. we send in a quick video. We had to watch all of those. And people don't realize that takes a really long time. And you and I were perfectionists in that way. So we were trying to be very diligent, really make sure that we were giving everyone the time that they deserved. Because I've been in a room to audition, you've been in uh, hundreds of rooms mm -hmm. to audition, you know that feeling of like not even hearing anything, not even feeling like they see your work that you put in. So yeah. I know that I tried to approach it that way too. Yeah, and we also made some like casting, you know, some very conscious casting choices of, hey, could this role be a woman? Is there any reason why this role is written male? Mm -hmm. And so we definitely flipped at least a couple characters that way. Um, yeah, we that's... definitely tried to think of it outside the box and, and not mm -hmm. keep it as scripted, you know, and really right. change things up. Yeah. Well, and definitely, you know, working on a SAG contract, it definitely helped the number of people that submitted and the quality of the people who were submitting to the project. Um, knowing that it was, you know, it was done under a union contract. Yeah, definitely. I'm a sag, I'm, I'm a sag, I'm a sag lady. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sag lady. <laughs> so, um, you know, we we so we cast the series. We got it. We got it going. Um, I wanted to know, and then we had to go into this process of like recording music, which yes. was a, a feat in itself because we had to record it before we even were on set or on location. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so you're hitting your highest emotional peaks yes. before you've ever done the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so that was something that we really had to chart out. And I'm glad that I was at every session, mm -hmm. um, not being the music director, because that was Becca, but directing the performances of all of the actors as they sang. Um, exactly. Yeah. It was very important to do that. And so I remember we had our first table read and we had everyone around the table and all of us were laughing profusely. We just could not stop laughing and then got emotional at the songs you're supposed to get emotional at. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know like what your favorite song was and what you were drawn to. Cause, and, and we've heard all of the songs a million times, especially in the, recording sessions. We just kept going over and over them in our heads. And so what mm -hmm. is one that sticks in your mind? I have my favorite, so I want to know yours. <laughs> um, well, I mean, fuck it is really the emotional heart of the piece. Um, just the opening of that is so gorgeous. Um, that was lovely to do, but also, you know, 50 hours a week, seeing all of the lev levers, <laughs> layers and levels there we go that's how yeah, you get there levers. You go. <laughs> um, just all of the the layers of performance in that and then seeing that come to life in that studio coffee shop that that god bless you you helped create along with cameron um 
I remember making the little way so great to see for the coffee yeah. shop. <laughs> and like yes. stuffing coffee and ma oh man. Oof, mm -hmm. the Gotta buy those pictures of beans and just place them up and voila. A bar set is suddenly a coffee bar. Movie um, magic. Yeah. But watching all of those pieces come together because and it could be my choral background that I just I really love great harmonies. Um so and I will say I'm I am quite fond of King of My Own World because it does star my husband, who I'm that's I'm rather a fan of. Yeah. Rather a I fan just, of. Yes. Well that's good. Good to be a fan. <laughs> of your husband. So I was going to ask you because I work you. So, Br so Brandon, my husband was in the show. Um, mm -hmm. He was our, our cranky barista. Um, so I got to work with, so, and I'm used to working mm -hmm. with him. Um, mm -hmm. Are you used to working with Jim? Oh yes. We, um, we coach together as actors and we've both directed each other. So, um, so it wasn't an issue going in of like, okay, he's going to do this role. No, no, no. That's that's not that's not a problem. Um, we communicate very well on set, and and there's a sort of like it's not separation of church and state, but it kind of is. That there's what happens on set, and there's what I need as a director, and then at home as a wife, totally different thing. Um, and the two don't have to affect each other. And part of it too is just knowing that we both really love a project, so. Our only goal on set is to make the project better. So when you understand that someone is on your own team, they're not, this is not a competitive thing. It's like, we're just both trying to make it better. Um, that makes it much easier to, to not have hurt feelings about anything that happens. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel you because it was always nice to like look over and ha as a producer trying to manage a whole day on set especially coffee shop dancing and food and lots of music happening and choreography. It was nice to just kind of look and have, not that everyone else wasn't friendly, but just have know that I have someone that truly has my back and that would mm -hmm. back me up at home as well. <laughs> um, so, I, so King of My Own World is one of my favorite songs as well. So I wanted to throw that out there. So mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite episodes. I'm gonna throw it out here. If you guys have not seen my Big Fat Blonde musical yet, go onto YouTube, watch all of the episodes. You can binge it in one night. We know you binge Netflix, so you can binge this. It's about an hour and, uh, you know, 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes mm -hmm. of really fun stuff. It will go by super quickly. So go watch it. Um, and if you haven't heard, we are Emmy eligible in the short form category for this show. So um, voting starts went june 17th june 17th yeah june 17th so uh, uh we're up on the fyc site as well if you don't want to watch it on youtube and you're a mm -hmm. voting member or academy member uh non-voting you can look at it as well um so i'm gonna throw that out there <laughs> um what else we have so much to talk about um so we recorded the music ahead of time and mm -hmm. we had to, like tell those stories. And so we had lots of locations. We went, we were on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We were mm -hmm. near the Hollywood sign. We were all over the place. We were making coffee yep. shops. We were at bars. We were, we, we made it happen all over the mm -hmm. city. Did you have a favorite you enjoyed? Um, I would say probably the, my favorite location um, was the gorgeous estate that let us use their screening room. Um, yeah. Because that was just beyond kindness to beyond have that sort of a beautiful, lush environment. Um, and it, it all came about uh, because of a bachelorette party and me staying for brunch. So I guess the moral of the story is stay for the champagne brunch when it is offered to you and good nice. things will come. <laughs> well, or yeah, have more bachelorette parties and brunches. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Just have both and then uh, great things will come. <laughs> yes, that was an incredible location. Uh, super blessed to, to um, film there. You know, mm -hmm. gorgeous views. Uh, we couldn't have asked for uh, a better location for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, and we were so, so very, very, very careful. 
It's like, <laughs> don't touch the walls. Don't touch, don't, no, no, don't touch the walls. <laughs> oh, I was like, don't touch anything. I was like, gloves and mm-hmm. wear stuff on your, like, no, wipe your feet. <laughs> I was very, I was very strict that day. <laughs> no one touch anything. Um, so there, there was a lot, a lot of people, we've had a lot of great audience feedback and fans have been messaging on YouTube and messaging us privately. I know Teresa and Becca have gotten really great messages. I know you have as well. And this show has such heart. This show is, like you said, a labor of love. We've all been super passionate about this since the beginning. And it has amazing messages of self-love and body positivity and kind of breaking down barriers and not listening to those negative voices. And so as a director, how did you help tr- help try to make those messages even more prominent? Um, I think just by establishing a general rule of kindness on set. Mm-hmm. Um, because when no one's allowed to be a jerk, when there's no screaming, um, when you're treating people like humans, the way that they should be treated, um, that enables them to feel better about themselves. And it enables them to treat everyone else better. Um, One of the things that really did come up, it's not really body positivity, but it really is, it's more um, consent and intimacy coordination just in working with our young actor, um, Atticus, who's a lovely young human who I have the pleasure of knowing him and knowing his family, um, but making sure that he was comfortable um, with like, you have someone who's playing your father. I mean, A, we've got your dad on set. Yeah. So that we like, we know everything's fine, but not forcing him, go hug that guy, go hug that person that you don't know. Because he was, how old was he when we filmed that? He was three? Three or four, three or four, yeah. Yeah, um, and I think it's important to let him know that he had autonomy in that. As in, that he had it was asking permission. It's like, hey, great, do you want to go play? Um, you know, this is this is Greg. He's a nice guy. They hung out, and then it's like, if you feel like it, go hug him. And you know, and he did because he wanted to, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think establishing those boundaries and that permission for people to feel comfortable in their own skin, especially at a young age, is very important. Um, and you know, and, and not the way that the industry was years ago. Um, but I, I think that's been a very good good reckoning that's been occurring. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And like that's that's a really great point. And like we had, you know, we did also have another kissing scene in the show as well. And we had, you know, we, we tried to make everyone comfortable. Um, and you know, um, make sure we were telling the story, but making the cast feel like they were at home and comfortable and, and could be open with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I, that I feel like that, um, that comfortability, I feel like you see on screen with everyone because they just felt they could do their dance moves and not feel like they were being judged and not feel like they were being critiqued. Right. And, um, yeah, I, I, I like as a producer, I tried to go about it as very in- inclusive and you know comfortable, so that people could feel like they could come to us, you know, you or me, and say, hey, like I want to try this, or you know, I'm not feeling comfortable with this, and we can we can you know handle it while still kind of creating this this amazing show. Well, absolutely, and part of it too is um, this is very much the way that I direct is I don't believe in top-down directing where one person has all of the vision and everyone else is meat puppets and you will do my bidding um, because A, that is a horrific amount of work and it's not the best work. Mm-hmm. So I think that you get the best out of people when you let them create, when you let them bring something to the table because we cast these brilliant actors for a reason. Yeah. Like you don't cast Michelle Holmes and go, mm, no, you know what? I think I want you to like move your hand like this. Could you do that? Could we just like, could I just micromanage you? It's like, no, yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, you hire these people because they have amazing instincts and then you let them roll with it. And, you know, we see what happens. I'll make adjustments if we have to, um, 
you know, have to make an adjustment for the way that it would fit into the entire project because mm -hmm. the the job of the actor is to have fealty or loyalty to their character. And as a director, I'm I have to have fealty to the entire project. So I have to have the entire project in my head at all times. Mm -hmm. Um and the big picture, not just the specific scene that we're working on, because it has to fit. Um, or or that's going to be a sad day of shooting. <laughs> and we did not have the time to be doing lots of reshoots. Thank you. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I was like, get it done in a day. <laughs> we, we don't have any Netflix money <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. I know. I, I feel like um I feel like it was very collaborative. We had Becca mm -hmm. doing kind of the director of photography work and mm -hmm. you know, I was there always butting my nose into everything and saying, oh, should we try it this way? And, you know, and I liked how you were very kind and, uh, you know, let me let me get in a few things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, there were some location choices that I, my body wishes I had chosen differently when we were at the park. And we set it up like, oh, so Becca and I are on a hill <laughs> as we're shooting. <laughs> and the actress are on the nice level safe face. <laughs> I remember that. I was like looking at it. And I remember we did like all of our park shots in the same day. And mm -hmm. this was like, we were like six hours in. And after climbing, I think I climbed a tree at one point. Mm -hmm. And, and it helped, like <laughs> helped someone else get, uh, Caleb get onto a tree. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is a great day. This is a great day for production choices. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know, and you got you got to participate in the yoga class. Yes, yes, yes did. I did. The, I, I was a I was a hidden. So the running joke, if you guys have not seen the series, which you should have, and I'm going to keep plugging it. Go on YouTube and watch it. Uh, the joke is that I, I'm in like every episode. I think I'm in every episode except the first one. Mm -hmm. I think, but I'm in the protest scene. I'm a sizzling bacon, the best bacon you'll ever mm -hmm. see. Uh, sizzling dancing bacon and then uh yes i'm in the yoga class i'm kind of all over i'm your favorite bar patron um i think oh, yes. yeah and yes, the, the back of your head is, is the back of my quite head. Yeah. many scenes and and um, the co coffee shop so it, it was quite and the acting scene oh, the yeah. acting class yes where yeah. you were um i sit on the teresa chair yes yeah so you are not the chair yeah you are availing yourself of the chair yeah <laughs> uh Oh, that's true. Oh, Teresa, um, the co-creator of the series says, but in the first episode, you're driving Hannah's car. That is true. <laughs> that is so true. I, I am super glad that I cannot see the the, the comments. I, I think that's great. Oh yeah, just, you don't, uh, there's, yeah, you can ignore them. Um, <laughs> uh, the tear chair, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it was really fun because I, um, uh, it was fun for me to jump in and just do stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, people needed help. So I'm going to do that. Well, I mean, that's really the essence of producing is like, it's just problem solving. It and totally the problem is. is that it's like, oh, I need a person here. Great. I am that person. Um, that's why I always had like an extra t-shirt in my, in my set bag. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, if I need to be in the background of this scene, <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> totally. Yes. And I did rent that car. So we had to have two cars for that scene, which was like 10 seconds when you look at the series. But I remember mm -hmm. we didn't have the same car later. Like I had a different car. So I, we had to get a different car. It was a whole thing. So a little behind production story. Yes. It was, it was, a, it was a little bit of fun. Um, well, you know, babies. Um, yeah, babies being expected sort of like threw some scheduling wrinkles into our um our production um but i was so happy to have a uh, like ace on this show and it's like oh great we just need to film because we were on set when he got the word that his wife we thought she was in labor um mm -hmm. she turned out not to be um baby did not come that day but it's like let's shoot you out well then we'll turn everything else around but um you know it's super important that you know family makes a huge difference and i'm not going to keep someone from the the bedside of their wife who's giving birth yeah. um she was like no i'm sorry we need to do another take yeah, I was like, wait one second. Let's uh, redo that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we definitely had lots of um, 
there was just lots of logistics, just like with any project you produce that um, you have to deal with. Um, and, but it's part of like, what I felt like is at the end of it, we were one big family. Cause we had to, you know, we all jumped in and did this together. And oh, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Um, is so besides, so you saw, so like Teresa asked a question in the chat. Um, I know we touched on it in the beginning, but you saw the original My Big Fat Blonde musical live. Um, mm -hmm. You saw Ter Teresa do uh, her one woman show. Um, and then you were like, stay in touch. And so like, what, what were the specifics of like why you wanted to get involved in the web series part of it? Um, because I really love like opening up a world. So a one person show is its own deal. Mm -hmm. And there's just a, so much more that can happen when you have actors working together, when you're dealing with different sets, when you're breaking things out so that you um, are not just seeing one person doing both sides of a scene, you can actually just see the full scene take place. Um, I think that really opens up this story. And this was a story that um, had the ability to break open as opposed to it needing to be confined. Um, you know, sometimes when you are adapting a play and you are bringing it to the screen, it still feels very much like a play um, just because of the limited locations. And I think we really opened up the world of, of Terry Walker um, and brought her all across LA and Burbank and in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> um, yes, we definitely gave her the full Hollywood experience. Uh, yes, I mean, one of my favorite like locations to just find was looking for the spot and finding the spot on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where as we're facing one way and we're seeing Hannah's experience, it's all the gorgeous, like the Pantages and all of the beautiful, beautiful parts of the, of of Hollywood Boulevard. And then we turn around for Terry and it's the edge. That is the part of broken dreams. <laughs> it's more of a pawn shop area. Um, and it was just so nice to find that quick bridge that all we had to do was flip the camera and you have a very different feel to the location. And thankfully we did not get shut down. Yes, we, uh, <laughs> we definitely had a few, uh, close call, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which we won't talk about on uh, yep. Global Airways. Um, yep. But yeah, it was, it, I think scouting, I know you and I were talking a lot about locations, like, um, and just trying to find those iconic Hollywood locations, because we're an independent production. So trying to do it on a budget and mm -hmm. do it, that's what I loved about how the cast and, and crew kind of all came together where we had set direct decorators come in and customize signs for the coffee shop and like all those little mm -hmm. details, you know, helped kind of elevate the production. And I'm so, so grateful and thankful for that. Oh yeah. Um, so I have to ask, um, mm -hmm. we're all talking about season two. And so I have to kind of pick your brain as a director. Where do you think, Terry Walker is after season one. Without giving too many spoils away, so spoilers away. So spoilers she, away, right? No, if you guys haven't seen it, I'm going to be very upset. Go to YouTube. <laughs> go, go watch it. <laughs> See right below. I, I put a little thing there so you can't even uh, deny that you can't that you don't know where it is. <laughs> um. So we've got you know some different ways that we could go with it of her either still struggling and then it's her it's documenting the actual filming of her series um you could you know approach it from sort of like a reality concept of she's now hit and we're doing the documentary of her ascendancy um or it can also be her bringing up the next person so her being in a position of mentorship mm -hmm. and um we have Catherine directing, so we don't necessarily yeah, yeah. have to direct. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but further adventures. I mean, there, 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 there are many things that go on in Hollywood. Um, you know, she could get her first series and 
then you see the, the joy of ratings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when shows don't get picked up and Oh yeah. my God, pilot season. You gotta go through yeah. pilot season and mm -hmm. the, how many pilots you shoot that don't even see the light of day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, I um, there is, what I love about this show is that there's, there's these moments set in reality that mm -hmm. are true to the business. And so many people have found them relatable, especially with the agent, unfortunately, with the, uh, with Jim's character, you know, uh, Lars and Bert, where he plays all of the, I mean, I don't want to ruin it, but where he's kind of playing a multifaceted characters that have, uh, that are scam artists pretty much. And that happens in Hollywood too. And so the show really hones in on the realities, but also like the dream making that Hollywood brings and the mm -hmm. visions and excitement of being in a new place and following your dreams. So it's a balance and it's all done through song and dance and uh, comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that in mind, like, do you have favorite moments in the show that either you really love directing or you just love to watch over and over again? Um, it's a tiny thing, but there's like a couple of moments in the coffee shop. A, it's like when Brendan is drinking the leftover coffee as he's cleaning, it never fails to amuse me. Um, and just and the sheer sweetness of Lowe's as the barista when he's like, I just want to be a barista. Is that okay? Because there, you know, there's so many people in Los Angeles who are not here for the industry. Mm -hmm. And we treat them like they're like these exotic odd people of why, why would you be here if this wasn't what you wanted to do? And it's just, it's such a sweet, lovely moment. Um, I was in the coffee shop. Um, It's hard to choose. I mean, the the be the chair moment with um, just the very very pompous acting teacher. Um, I'm sure we've had all <laughs> we we've all had a teacher like that or oh, a photographer yes. take our headshots that we get them back and we hate them and yeah it's oh, it's, it's I, a oh, for sure. Yeah, and actually, I, you know, I just thought of like the the Burt's improv was like I'm going to take your career to the next level. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. Woo. Yeah. I, I, there's places and it's just, uh, it's, it's just such a lovely moment. I love um, the audition scene with um, in the lobby where Terry's waiting and the demon mm -hmm. comes out and there's oh, just yeah. like a really great song monologue that mm -hmm. is just, it, it just like hits all of the buttons that uh, oh. you like hate her, but you like can relate. And it's like, Oh, Oh yeah, and you know, and Caitlin came into the auditions. Uh, we carol together, um, yes. and just killed it. Oh yeah, just we knew, absolutely think, killed it. I think we both looked at each other like, oh yeah, that's we don't even need to see anyone else. Yep, yep. we're good. <laughs> we're good on this role. Yeah, and um, I think and she recorded that in one take, and then we made her do a safety. Right. Yeah, she's yeah. incredible. Incredible. She came in yeah. so prepared. And she totally encapsulated that character so well. And yeah. like she's and a sweetheart, she's a sweetheart in real yeah. life too. So like she's that's like one of the sick. nicest people you'd ever oh, want to meet. Just, just you know, um, so she she plays an evil person very well, but she is not. She is not. Yeah, mm -hmm. she just got. Uh, I think she just got engaged the other day. So congratulations. She did. She did indeed. She did. Yay. Oh yeah. So, you, so we have babies happening. We have weddings. Uh, <laughs> It's true. Um, exactly. after, we had our um, Claire, our Catherine got married during the course of, of this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's we like, had weddings, like, we had uh, babies, and then now mm -hmm. I think there's two babies. I think Ace had a second baby. Yes. <laughs> and then we're getting another wedding. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. <laughs> um, so what was my, I was trying to think of my other favorite moment that I love. Mm -hmm. I, I love Michelle as the agent. Mm -hmm. I think that was like a heart, just, oh, that's a, it's a horrible song. So, so when we want, when we had the cast screening, I don't know if you remember, but all of us were kind of uncomfortably laughing. So it's one of those songs where you kind of want to laugh, but you also feel really bad for Terry. And it, it, it's interesting to see people's reaction when they watch things for the first time. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and Brad Griffith's voice, just that, that great, great face. So delightful every second that he's on screen. Um, Just, (laughs) just laughing, thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, another one, I'm trying to think of like some other moments. There's so many to remember. (laughs) Yes. Um, so if you could, if you could give one message to fans and to people that are going to watch this and enjoy this, what's the one takeaway that you would want them to bring with them? I guess the one takeaway that I would want them to bring is believe in yourself and don't let people tell you that you can't do something, especially not just because of your size. Um, you know, I, um, I've had some of those roles that Terry takes in alternate universes in this um, in this project, but I made a commitment to myself that even though I was, you know, a woman of size, that I would never play a character that was just a fat joke. Now there might be a joke in there, but I will always play a human being who is an actual character and make them three dimensional, because um, I've got you know a great sense of humor about myself. But it's like that's. I'm not going to just play a joke. Yeah. Um, so it's important to have that. Um, and that, you know, the other thing I kind of really loved about this is that it was really more a friend love story with Terry and um, Catherine. Uh, I kind of wanted to say the actress's name. Um rather than it being this romantic love story. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, yeah. finding your tribe of people is really important. Yeah, I know that, that so when Teresa and Becca were, when we were chatting, I think before you came on and we were still kind of adapting and developing mm-hmm. the series script, we talked a lot about the the friendships. And I know it was very important for us to not have a romantic relationship, especially in this first series mm-hmm. uh, or this first season, because yeah. there's so much more. Because Terry's still finding her herself in a new oh, yeah. city, you know, she's meeting all these new people. She's trying to find herself. So, adding that element did not make sense yeah. for the story and for Terry's journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so I and I love that it's building positive female friendships and positive um like self-confidence and building that and making sure that you're not letting people tear you down and i think that's an important thing that anyone can really take away yeah i know that when i when i rewatch it and sometimes the the songs still get stuck in my head and I'll, i'll be singing them around the house that i know that we put so much into this and we did it with lots of love and we want people to feel something and we want people to love themselves and love each other and I know we talked about kindness and spreading kindness and I think we did that with this show I think we did yeah I mean it's it's important to put something positive out in the world Mm -hmm. Um, and we are in no way endorsing inviting someone at 2 a.m to come live with you just to be clear (laughs) that is Yes. Someone random you haven't seen in 10 years in a bar. Yes. Um, yeah. Not recommending that. Just no. kind of, you got to suspend your disbelief a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It, it works in this case, but um not going to recommend and, that highly. And check where you're parking. Check where you're parking all the time. Yes. 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 You know, red curbs mean something. Yeah. And there is a thing called Yelp. <laughs> Make sure you're looking up your acting mm-hmm. pictures. So, and I, uh, oh, there was a, there is like a term for like the high frequency parking violators. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my God. So, so Teresa's <laughs> asking where you see Terry in five years. And I'm hoping she paid off all those parking tickets. That's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Oh, where is he, Terry, in five years? Um, I think she's continued writing. And 
Yeah, I think she might be show running in five. That might be a little bit of a stretch, but, but she might be show running in five. Okay. I can mm -hmm. see that. All right. <laughs> Anything's possible. Um, she can call all of her um, all of her coffee shop uh, friends. Yes. Teresa, Teresa, don't boo. That's not very nice. <laughs> anyway, um, we've talked for 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and we went over our time, but that's okay. I'm so glad we did this. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with everyone about my Big Fat Bomb musical? Um, just, you know, I love this project. I'm really proud of this project. And I really hope you enjoy this project. Um, cause it's, it's very close to my heart. Um, as, as a plus size actress who's dealt with a lot of this stuff and in the course of my career, um, you just want to make things better for the next generation. So, um, think positively and just keep going. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, everyone, thank you so much um, for everything, for joining us. Thank you, Lisa, for all the work that you did on the show. Where can people find you and like tell everyone what other projects you're working on? Um, well, people can find me on, on Twitter and on Instagram. It's just Lisa K. Wyatt. I do not try to hide myself. Um, and um, I'm an associate producer on Deadliest Catch right now. So um, if you... Go check out the antics on the Bering Sea. That also helps me. <laughs> uh, let's see. And I've got um, a new exit or no exit is an indie film that I shot during the pandemic. So um, that should be out shortly. I just did some ADR for that. So and that one's a very cool sci-fi horror project. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. Nifty. <laughs> That's so exciting. Well, you're so incredible. Um, if you guys want to follow me, I'm on all, all social platforms at Emily May Heller. And also, if you haven't already, go onto YouTube or the FYC site, watch my Big Fat Blonde musical. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We're going to be posting tons of behind the scenes videos leading up to voting on June 17th. So you don't want to miss it. And I'm so thankful that Lisa joined us tonight and we're going to have more of these discussions in the coming weeks. So thanks again. Thank you, Lisa. And thanks to Lisa and everyone for joining in the chat. Um, until we have another one of these, uh, go watch my Bivet Ball musical. Bye. Bye.